Knowing how to find an element inside a linked list is going to be a very important part whenever you're working with linked lists. So we're going to start creating a simple uh, function that what it does is uh, taking a value and returns the node with the or the first node that it finds with that value. So if I were to pass in uh, three, for example, it should give me the second node. So since the function is going to be called something like find node, it's going to have to return a node or a node pointer really. And it's going to take in our, possibly our tail. So I'm going to get here a simple pointer, a single pointer to a node because we don't need, we don't need a double pointer because we're not going to modify the list. We're just trying to iterate over it and find a certain node. That's all. And pass in the reference to it. And then we want the value. That's why I'm not also uh, taking into consideration the head. We just want the tail, that's all. So how do we do it? Well, it's very simple. We've uh, learned how to iterate over a uh, linked list or a double linked list, so we can use that. I'm just going to copy and paste this for loop. It's exactly the same as we've had previously, right? Initialization is tail until it's not known, until we've finished basically uh, looking at every single node, right? And then the step is just current, current down, arrow next because we have the tail, we have the beginning of our linked list. So we have to go forward, not backwards. And what do we do here? Very simple. If current arrow, what, x equals our value, value, then what we do is just simply return current and that's it because if current arrow next is the value we are searching for then we just have to return current which is a pointer to a node that has the value value passed to the function nice and as as a default if we don't find anything so if this if is false for every single element inside that double linked list let's also return something like null so if we get null from this guy, we know that we haven't found anything and we can check for that. Now let's actually remove this part and we have the linked list one, three and seven. Simple enough. And now let's, uh, let's try to find a node. We're going to say here node uh, found equals what? Find the node of, we want to pass in first the tail. We don't need a double pointer to our tail. So we're just going to pass in the tail. And then the value, we're going to search, let's say, for uh, 7, right? And of course, let's print f its, mm, let's say its value. And let's also print f its uh, next. So if we want to print uh, a pointer, we just say percent %p and the backslash n here. So you can see here, uh, found arrow x and found arrow next. We can actually do something like value and next. Nicely formatted. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I'm going to get value seven and the next pointer is no. So we know that this guy is the head. And if we change it for, for example, uh, three, we did find value three and the next pointer is not null. It's a value. It's a pointer to the next node inside our double linked list, right? Simple enough. And if we, for example, do, um, let's say four, remember we don't have four inside our linked list. Well, everything is gonna break because we didn't check if our found node is null or not, remember? We can return null here. So this guy can be null. Therefore we shouldn't dereference it if it's null. So you can say here, if uh, found, is null, let's say print f, no node was found, backslash n. Else, then just business as usual. So if you try to run this, you'll notice no node was found. And if I change this to, for example, three, this works perfectly. Even if it's the first node of a double link list, you can say one here and it's gonna work. Now this was very simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at the recursive version of this function. Now I like iterative functions. They're easier to read, easier to understand, 
but I know that uh, many many teachers out there are actually uh, requiring students to know recursive uh, functions, especially with linked lists. So I'm going to show you just this example for recursive uh, recursive algorithms or recursive functions, really, and uh, I'm going to let you tinker with it later on. So what should this uh, function return? Well, it's going to return definitely a uh, node pointer as before. I'm going to call it find node uh, recursive. And again, what do we have to pass in? It's still going to be the tail, of course, because we have to start from somewhere, right? But I'm going to call it in a generic uh, manner called node because this guy is going to be called for certain for other nodes other than the tail, right? And of course, the value that we're searching for. All right, how do we do this? Well, if the node that we are on is um, is the value, we simply return, right? Simple enough. So if node arrow x equals value, we just return our node, and that's it. We're done. Nice. Uh, if it's not, if it's something else, then we are here. Well, if it's something else, what do we do? Well, we probably just want to call it for the next element in line. How do we do that? Well, we can simply say return find node recursive. And instead of saying node, we're going to say node arrow next. And then same as before, or the same value as before. Right? So uh, the first iteration, we're going to call it with our tail. So this guy is going to be the tail. It's going to say, is tail arrow x, uh, let's say, 3? Well, no, it's not. Our, our tail is 1. Hmm. So it's not going to return here. It's going to return this. What does this return? Well, this is node arrow next is the second node in our list, which has the value 3. So it's going to come in here at the second call. And this guy is going to be the node with the value 3. And the value is going to be 3. So these two are going to be equal. And this guy is going to return. Right, so this is what is going to return out of the second call. The first call is going to return, well, the return of this guy. So we're just going to get the second node when we're searching for it. There's one caveat with this, and uh, we're going to see in just a moment here. So if I try to call this instead, find node recursive. So what is going to happen with this? Well, this is the simplest example, right? We, get in, we pass in tail here, and the value is 1, and our tail has the value 1. So it's going to be tail and 1, tail and 1, tail arrow x is 1, and value is 1. So just going to return the tail back, and that's it. All right, so for this example, we're just going to find out that we get value 1, and the next is not null, of course. But what if we give it 3? If we give it 3, we're going to get, well, still value 3, and the next pointer is a different one. Fair enough. Now, what if I give it a different value than 1, 3, or 7? If I say here 4, what's going to happen? Think for a moment and try to uh, recognize the issue that I have inside this code. Right. See, if I try to run it, I'm going to get an error saying that node is null. Why, why did it get to be null? Because we called it with the tail. But remember, this guy keeps on calling uh, recursively with the node arrow next parameter. So first is the tail. Nice. That's not null. It can be verifiable. Then is the second element. That's node arrow next. Then it's the third element, node arrow next, arrow next. That's seven. That, that's still a valid node. But that last node, arrow next, is null. So we're passing in here null right as the fourth call to this function and null arrow anything is just going to break the program so we have to check if this guy is null similarly as uh, we did here with the for loop right this is where we were checking if this guy was null here we're not checking anything so we have to do that and where do we check it well before actually dereferencing it Right here, we're defacing the value. We don't want to do that. We want to say if node is null, then what do we do? Hmm. 
Well, let's think for a second. Uh, if node is null, that means that we've iterated over the whole list, doesn't it? Right? Because if node is null, that means that there was a previous node where it's node arrow next was null. And what do we know about linked lists? Well, if a node, if a node's arrow next is null, that means it's the head of the list. That also means that is the last node of the list if we are starting from the tail. So when we get to this condition, if this condition is true, that means that we have iterated over the whole list and we didn't find anything. So what we can do is simply return null in this situation. And if I try to run it, we're just gonna get no node was found. So that works nicely. Now, with sim singly linked lists, what I did was uh, implement the count algorithm recursively. What I'd like you to do is to implement the count algorithm recursively on your own on W linked lists, right? And do the same for finding a node in a singly linked list. That would be a very nice exercise, I think. Uh, it will help you better understand this recursive nature of things. Well, if you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Bye.